ballast and CG. Ballast and CG. Um, well, let's start with the the CG. Uh, what I do in order to measure the CG at home is I put a little piece of masking tape here on the wing, and I mark. Uh, where uh, the CG is supposed to be. I usually have several markings. This has only one mark because it's already was the place that, that I've tested on other planes and I knew that I was going to do it. But usually I would, if, if the instructions say, let's, for example, 65, I would have a mark at 65. I have uh, and, and to another couple of marks every two millimeters forward and another couple of marks two millimeters aft. Uh, it's offset. You will see that it's offset to the side because that's the wing with the pegs so you have a little bit of offset what I do is I basically take a screwdriver and I balance the plane upside down I would put a screwdriver and I would balance the plane you know with the air conditioning off no uh, airflow in the room I will balance it off and I turn it over and just see that that it's it's um, balanced and and th that that's enough for me if it's a millimeter four aft usually the difference will be insignificant and and uh, you can always uh, play around with ballast a little with CG a little bit on the field even if you have two planes no one's ever said that they need to be within half a millimeter of one another um, they can vary a little bit because you know not every plane is exactly the same they come out of molds they, they play around a little bit uh, things change okay uh, surface roughness whatever if you need to move the CG forward a millimeter or two move it okay if you need to move it back move it play around with it but for the most part it's pretty much within one millimeter of, of one another all my planes uh, they fly very very similarly the Vortex 3 especially is not that CG sensitive uh, you can I've flown it from 70 millimeters uh, back to about 60 millimeters forward. That's a huge range, and and it can still be flown even more further aft and more further forward. Um, it, it, I found it, that it's more trim sensitive than pitch sensitive. If it's flying, if it's flying like it's nose heavy, just give it a, a one click of down ele uh, elevator, and it will just fly. I mean it. It's not that CG sensitive like some other planes that I had. I, I, I really like that, in fact, because I don't need to play with the CG. Um, my The weight of the plane, I usually like in light air. I think planes around 220, 230 are really good morning planes. Uh, I've flown a plane that's even lighter than that. It's about 200 grams and 195 grams. And that's a little bit too light in my opinion for for 99.99 percent of the times i think that 220 is probably a really good weight for light air for this plane i my my all-rounder weight for this plane is uh, this plane is 240 245 and I, I really like this weight i really really like this weight for this plane for anything other than dead air this is probably the plane that I will fly and this is the weight that I will fly in um, in windy conditions I like uh, a little bit more energy so around 260 grams to start off with and as the wing picks up I like to fly planes heavy I have a lot of I don't launch very high but I'm not that weight sensitive in launching so I can launch heavy planes to the same altitude as I launch light planes I just reach a final velocity of, of of my body so I can't throw higher lighter planes some people can throw lighter planes higher and um, up to a certain amount of weight which is uh, about 320 340 I launch almost to the same altitude and because I'm not a very high launcher I usually prefer I, I read the air I think there's a thermal I like to get to it as fast as possible and work it so I like a plane that has a, a lot of a uh, mass so I can get there uh, and work it and come back um, so my personal flying style suits uh, you know the, the my pref preference of, of heavy 
uh, planes in the wind. It, it usually depends a lot on the conditions and the strength of the thermals, etc. Uh, so when the wind picks up, I will fly this plane around 280, uh, even 300. If the wing is stupid high, then, oh, way, then even over 300 grams. Um, I am using tungsten ballast. Uh, I've shown you uh, there are different types of weights. Um, I have this. This is, you know, this is a very. This is a small weight. This is about 10 grams. Uh, they were very narrow weights, so I've added a little bit of masking tape because on this fuselage, had it only on one out of uh, three planes that I've had the automating system with uh, with the. Um, with the rib system and it just kind of got stuck in there between uh, the carbon rods that, that are holding the rib system in place so I've added a little bit of masking tape and that solves the issue and if you have this for this was about seven millimeters in diameter which is pretty narrow so I've added and brought it up to about 10 millimeters and that's it no more problems uh, this is 10 grams uh, this one is 20 uh, this one is a different uh, type of weight it's about 30 grams this one is uh, 40 grams this one is 70 I have another um, a ballast set that 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 has a 90 in it and this one is 120 I've never tried it before I've, I've actually never flown this uh, plane in uh, you know even my other planes have never flown in competitions with 100 grams but you know better be safe than sorry uh, if you have ballast with a diameter about 10 millimeters uh, you can throw you can put it in the fuselage and no problem at all my CG moves a little bit forward uh, with the weight and um, here I'll show you uh, putting it in just pushing it in it goes into this hole and that's it and then when I put the canopy it doesn't come out again uh, the CG moves just a little bit forward on this plane uh, when I add a ballast the CG of the ballast is about 10 millimeters forward of the CG of the plane and that way I don't really need when I'm adding ballast it naturally drops the nose just a little bit so uh, the plane flies faster uh, that's the way I like it. Some people will put the CG of the ballast at the CG of the plane and then if they want to move it forward they will add a pen in the nose or something like that. Um, this is the way I've been doing it for years and, and it works for me. Um, let's see, uh, how do you know the, no the nose is heavy or, or not on this plane? Well. It's very similar to other planes. You fly the plane and, and you see if the plane keeps, after you trim it, uh, if you have a heavy nose, you need to trim a lot of elevators. So when you change the airspeed, the nose comes up. You increase the airspeed, the nose keeps coming up. So every time, you, you, uh, uh, so when you're flying and the, the CG changes, the plane just bu bubbles up. Uh, that usually means that your nose is on the heavy side. If the plane, when it, you know it flies faster and then you need to pull the elevator in order to slow it down and then it slows down too much and then you need to push down the elevator in order to for it you know to, to fly faster if you have this problem maintaining speed your CG is too, too far out I my personal preference is a little bit forward I prefer planes that are easier to fly rather than planes that that need me to be very very acute to the speed of the plane uh, that's usually something that that I will eventually um, make a mistake on and will cost me time so I prefer planes that are more stable and then I can even take my eyes off for a few seconds off the plane and look around for, for thermals and I don't need to pay so much attention to how the plane flies I can concentrate on other things um, so to each his own um, to check what I do with this plane is, is that I basically put it in the dive test it's you know it's a bit controversial the dive test but I think it gives you a general idea 
uh, very early in the morning you'll find yourself being able to click another couple of clicks of, of up elevators so a CG that may work in the afternoon will seem very very forward in the morning just because of your ability to train it to fly slower so be mindful of that a test that you're doing a dive test in the morning and a dive test in the afternoon are going to yield slightly different results but I trimmed the plane and then I put it in a about a 30 40 per, uh, degree dive and then I let it bring the nose up and it usually takes the plane about three seconds to bring it up from 30 40 degrees down to straighten level and that's where I, I fly my planes now I'm always playing around with the elevator trims uh, I, I see it as a tool a lot of people will touch the trims put it there and then will complain that the plane is flying too fast or too slow I always trim the plane when I'm flying and I'm coming back and you know I need to push a little before instead of holding the sticks and flying it actively I may put a couple of, of you know clicks of down trim with uh, with the, my thumb and and let the plane just fly and then the next flight I want to uh, have a little bit more float I will trim a couple of, of clicks of up I always work the trims I mean the, the trimming of the elevator is good for about plus or minus two three clicks two up to two, two or three clicks if you have something that's changing more than that and maybe it's temperature and you have some server drift or you have some lines that are getting stretched in the heat or something like that but but a, a couple of clicks up and down that's perfectly fine use the, the the trimmer to trim the airspeed it's a tool that you need to learn how to use okay don't be shy of, of using it um, and that's pretty much it if you have any more questions that you want me to put on video if you want to see how I do things um, future builds uh, if you have any any questions at all ask me and if it's a uh, clip worthy I will make another clip with the missing information um, that's it